GTDF15 stands for Growth Differentiation Factor and is a cytokine and is emerging as a biomarker for different diseases. Among these diseases are cancer, for instance, breast and prostate cancer. It is also important in the fibrosis process, what is often present in diseases such as cirrhosis and heart failure. GDF is also important within the diabetes con context. Diabetes has severe complications, for instance, it can cause blindness, kidney chronic disease, where the filtration is impaired and it is the most common cause of dialysis in the world. Uh, also, many patients with diabetes present with poor peripheral circulation, leading to amputation of members, especially the foot. Recently, several studies have demonstrated that in type 2 diabetes models, GDF15 is able to attenuate the development of renal fibrosis, reducing diabetic nephropathy. Taking into account the previous knowledge about GDF15, we believe that it can do much more. Not only may protect the kidney from fibrosis, but also on other tissues, for example, ret the retina and the heart. That brings us to the question, which are the target tissues of GDF15? First, we want to find out where in the body GTF-15 acts. For that, we will use the positron emission tomography, a technique that allows to scan the whole body of a mouse for radioactive labeled compounds. Radioactive isotopes create positrons that collide with electrons. The energy created is measured and shows the location of our compound. The first step that we need to do is to develop this compound. For that, we will take the regular GDF-15 and perform the lactoperoxidase reaction, which incorporates radioactive iodine-125 isotopes in the tyrosine resides residues of GDF-15. Once that we have the radio-labeled uh, GDF-15, we will inject it into the mice. The localization will be assessed in wild-type mice as well as in the DBDB diabetic mice model. The aim is to see if there are visible differences. We expect to see high quantities of GDF in tissues like kidney and adipocytes. This experiment will be done in multiple time points through the course of the disease to find the moment of highest expression of GDF-15. Later, we will sacrifice the mice and obtain samples for our next experiment. Taking into account that in the first experiment we will identify the tissue that GDF15 is most likely to bind in diabetic mice, we want to identify the receptor on which the GDF15 binds. Most likely, the expression levels of GDF receptor will follow the pattern demonstrated in the PET scan in the experiment 1. The next step is to perform a screen in which we can identify the receptors that follow the same expression profile. For this screening proce process, we will use the tissues where GDF15 was most concentrated, for example, the kidney. Then, we will perform RNA sequencing to analyze the whole transcriptome of the tissue. GDF15 is in the same fa family as TGF-beta. It has been previously suggested that GDF binds to TGF-beta receptors 1 and 2. So, one expected result is to find these two proteins as potential GDF15 receptors. However, comparing expression data can only give a correlation, but cannot be conclusive about a ligand receptor binding. For this, we need protein direction data. This could be accomplished by using co-immune precipitation of GDF15 and subsequently identify its interactors using mass spectrometry.